Ms. Seglin with Middle School Language Arts 7. Today I'm going to be reading from How They Choked about Vincent Van Gogh. This connects with our grammar escape room that we did yesterday. Um, the article, I'm going to put it up here so you can see it and follow along. Okay, title Vincent Van Gogh. There's a picture here and it looks like he is eating paint. Don't try that at home. The subtitle of the article is Least Likely to Succeed. There's some information here about his life. He was born in the Netherlands in 1853. You can see that. Vincent Van Gogh ate paint and drank turpentine. Each swirling color-loaded brushstroke he painted was a gut-wrenching expression of who he was. His artwork is much loved by everybody except for all the people who knew him. He couldn't even give away his paintings for free, but Vincent Van Gogh kept painting anyway. Anybody in their right mind would have given up, and that's just it. Maybe he wasn't. He's famous for never doing a self-portrait with a smile on his face, and why would he? Vincent Van Gogh spent a lifetime being harassed and wishing for things he never had, friendship, love, happiness, or an art sale. Vincent was the oldest of six children. He acted like he was born on a debate team. There was always something to disagree and fight about. Even his grandmother thought he was a pest. His teachers tried beating him into a better mood and schoolyard bullies tormented him. So he was homeschooled where his volcanic outburst could only annoy people with the same last name. But after a while, they couldn't take him either. Starting at age 11, Vincent was sent from one boarding school to the next in a different town. His parents hoping he'd reinvent himself as a likable boy someplace else. But he always remained that bothersome and obsessive boy that no one wanted around. Still, he managed to learn three languages and read a lot. Vincent was a brainiac. By the age of 16, Vincent hadn't mellowed any, so his minister father passed him off to a wealthy uncle who needed help at the family art gallery. But Vincent's hypersensitivity, bad hygiene, and gruff criticism of potential buyers' taste in art had a way of driving away clients. They tried banishing him to a distant stockroom in the London branch where no one could quite understand what he kept yelling about. Unfortunately, the people in London didn't care for the wild look in his eyes either. So Vincent was sent to the Paris Gallery. Bless you. Maybe they wouldn't dislike him so much if he spoke in French. Wrong. He was unpleasant in all three languages he knew. Vincent was fired from his own family's art business. But not once in the seven years of being shuffled around within the company did Vincent say, hey, I want to be an artist. That wouldn't come for four more years. Vincent wasn't a people person. So it was no surprise that he also failed as a bookseller, school teacher, and a missionary. Vincent didn't know what he wanted to be when he grew up. He wandered from town to town, and even though his father sent him money, he chose to wear rags and refused to eat. He was mocked wherever he went. His family seriously looked into putting Vincent into an insane asylum, but it didn't happen. That would be a mental hospital. Then out of the blue, when he was 27 years old, and with his usual gusto, Vincent began drawing day and night. Vincent's family had always encouraged him to draw and they were thrilled he had a hobby, but what they really wanted was for him to act normal and get a job. His younger brother, Theo, who now had Vincent's old job at the art gallery, sent Vincent some money. But eventually, Vincent had to move back in with his parents. They were one big, unhappy family again. Vincent would take off into the countryside, lugging his pencil, sketch pad, a plank of wood, and a chair. He practically, he'd practically force people to pose for him, but mostly 
They made fun of him, complained he was unpleasant, and thought there was something very wrong with him. He was scary too, especially when he stalked his own cousin. He kept showing up at her house uninvited. He wanted to marry her, even though she hadn't so much as winked in his direction. When Vincent held his hand over a flame, searing his flesh while professing his love for her, he showed his devotion all right, and also that he was very dangerous. With his museum of bad traits, Vincent hit the road, and his story played out over again and again. Vincent was banished or escaped from 25 different locations in his short lifetime of 37 years. You do the math. Brother Theo was resigned to paying all of Vincent's expenses. Vincent promised it would only be temporary until his art sales started pouring in. Vincent liked working in the blackest black, and he got busy drawing more people. It was sort of like having friends, except he had to pay them. At one point, he used Theo's money to buy himself a whole new family a woman with her newborn baby, daughter, mother, and sister. Vincent offered to pay for their food and their doctor bills, so they all moved in. Plus, they charged him to pose. He had bought the worst kind of relatives. He even bought himself girlfriends, and they repaid by giving him syphilis. Vincent's parents were mortified by his behavior, and family relations were at an all-time low when Vincent's dad died suddenly. Vincent's mom blamed the untimely death on Vincent and she never forgave him. Thea told Vincent to stop drawing people, do landscapes, and quit using dark colors. Paint something and use more color. Theo also demanded to see proof of his new colorful landscapes. Vincent was easy to predict because he would do the opposite of any suggestion. He just used more black and hunted for more models. The only guy that kept coming back was 72 years old and could pose as still as a corpse. It's important to mention he was also deaf. Out of options, he joined Theo in Paris. Eventually, Vincent started to paint. He boldly signed his paintings, Vincent, but he felt lousy with toothaches that made his whole head hurt. Sooner or later, one third of his teeth had to be removed. He hardly slept, he suffered, suffered from malnutrition, and he was an alcoholic. But the hardest thing of all was the loneliness. If he wasn't paying, no one ever came to visit. The Parisians called Vincent truly ugly, ugliness personified, and he was banned from painting out in the streets. Even Theo found him unbearable. After a while, the cook quit and no one would pose. So Vincent got himself a really good mirror and painted himself. Theo was selling paintings by Degas, Monet, and Gauguin while Vincent's work stayed in the closet. To everyone, to everybody at this time, Vincent's work looked crazy, just like him. They couldn't be separated. No one was buying him or his art. Two years and 200 paintings later, Vincent was back on the move, but it wasn't easy. He was weak and suffered from fevers and mouth sores. The local punks in Arles, France would squeeze out all his paint and models took advance payments to pose, but then never showed up. Vincent had to paint sunflowers instead. Lucky us. Theo paid the artist Paul Gauguin to join him to join Vincent in Arles and be his painting buddy. But there was no such thing as someone getting along with Vincent, not to mention their clashing painting methods. While Vincent liked to work outdoors, laying on thick layers of paint in a world whirlwind of motion, Gauguin preferred to work indoors slowly and with very little paint. Models flocked to Gauguin, and worst of all, Theo was selling his paintings. When Gauguin made his paint plans to leave, Vincent took a knife and caught, cut off a chunk of his own ear. He wrapped the bloody gift in newspaper and walked it to where Gauguin was visiting. But the doorman wouldn't let the bleeding artist inside, so Vincent handed over the gruesome package and said, Remember me. 
It was impossible to forget. Gauguin took off with two of Vincent's sunflower paintings and never looked back. During the five months he spent in and out of the hospital for his self-inflicted ear injury, Vincent chased the nurses and jumped into other patients' beds. Sometimes the doctors shackled him to a bed. Sometime later, Vincent pleaded to go back to his dear friends in Arles, but his so-called friends signed a petition to kick him out of town. This time his family got their wish. Vincent finally went into an insane asylum. A retired eye doctor named Dr. Perron ran the asylum, but luckily it didn't take a brain surgeon to know that painting was good therapy for Vincent. So he was allowed to paint until he was caught eating his paints and drinking his turpentine. He still came up with an average of one new painting every other day, including Iris's and Starry Night while he was there. Theo didn't like Starry Night or any of the hundreds of other paintings that Vincent had been sending to him, saying they will undoubtedly be appreciated someday. That was the understatement of the century. It was decided that Vincent was cured enough to leave the asylum and move to auvers sur oise near Dr. Gachet, who had treated other artists like Manet, Renoir, Pizarro, and Cezanne for various ailments. Vincent lived alone and went out daily to paint. The local teenagers chased him through the streets, put a snake in his paint box, and salted his food. They got him drunk and played other pranks on him. Two months later, on one of his unusual, his usual painting excursions, something terrible happened. Vincent came limping back to town with a bullet wound in his stomach. Guns were rare in rural France. What did Vin where did Vincent get one? No one seemed to know. The police asked Vincent if he tried to commit suicide. Vincent said, yes, I believe so. He also said, do not accuse anyone. Vincent had already cut off his own ear, so everyone jumped on the story that now the crazy artist had shot himself, even though the facts didn't add up. No gun was ever found. All of Vincent's painting gear had disappeared. Vincent was shot in the stomach below the ribs from a weird angle. 98% of people trying to kill themselves with a gun aim at their head. And his wound didn't look as if it had been caused by a shot from close range. The bullet was still in his body. Vincent Van Gogh died 30 hours later in Theo's arms on July 28, 1890 in Auvers sur Oise, France. He was only 37 years old. The local church wouldn't hold Vincent's funeral service because he was a suspected suicide. Vincent had to be borrowed, buried far from the church. Vincent's <coughs> own mother didn't even come to his funeral and neither did his four other living siblings. Theo was the only family member there. A few other people who knew him showed up. 16 year old Rene Sacrepin was one of the boys who harassed Vincent and he carried around a 380 caliber gun everywhere he went. It was old and would go off erratically. The day after the shooting, Rene and his family conveniently left town. In 1956, when Rene was 82 years old and Vincent Van Gogh's work had become famous, Rene came forward to tell his story his account of what had hap what happened. He admitted to being the leader of a rowdy group of boys and that they pestered Vincent for fun. <laughs> Rene always had the gun with him and he claimed that Vincent <coughs> took it from him and shot himself. But Rene also said he was out of town that day. So which story was true? No one knows for sure. The shooting most likely, the shooting was most likely a mean prank that went very bad. Most people knew Rene owned the gun, but not a single person spoke up. No one wanted to admit that bullying was so wrong. And no one, including Vincent, wanted a teenager to be accused of murder. Van Gogh saw the world through different eyes than the rest of us, and he was a pill to everyone. 
And speaking of pills, he could have used some for what doctors now think he had, a manic depressive disorder along with temporal lobe epilepsy. But if he had taken pills to control his mania, he might not have been an artist. As St. Vincent Van Gogh might just have been a really good plumber. It's hard to tell which is more unpredictable, Vincent Van Gogh or the art business. Nobody wanted to hang with Vincent back then. But today, he won't hang with you unless you have about $100 million to hang a piece of his art on your wall. He is one of the greatest painters of all time. And for being such an original, Vincent Van Gogh, bless you, got bullied to death at 37. I am myself, he said. That was putting it mildly. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the bell and subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Thanks.